Praise the Lord, everybody. How you doing? Uh, last. Amen. Good to see Sister Bertha and Ed. say hello to everybody. I see some already joined us. Uh, Minister Ron's there and Sister Beverly there and I see Malik. Amen. So I'm coming from you at a different location tonight. Amen. Been down here all day uh, at the house of God. And maybe sooner or later, we'll, I'll start doing Bible class from here. Amen. We get back to the house of God. We'll see. We'll see how it works. How you doing, Bertha? Blast, blast. That's doing well, doing well, doing well. I see you out there, Ron. I see you out there. Amen. Good to see you. And Malik and, and Beverly. And we know others will be joining us. Well, Bertha, why don't you get us started? And we get, let's get us started on the prayer. We go right into the lesson. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, we come in the mighty name of Jesus, thanking you for another day a day to gather together and worship and praise your name. Lord, we ask that you let a word go forth that would take us throughout the week and that you would cover us in your word. In Jesus' name, help us to receive of your word Amen. and have a good class. In Amen. Jesus' name, amen. Amen. I know that's right. Have a good class. You know, it feels good, although I'm home many times. It actually feels good to be at God's house tonight, too. To do just to be here all day uh, it's been great amen and see what god is doing so everybody you know what we talked about on this past sunday and what we're doing um you know we're revisiting the same topic on bible class but obviously slow it down a little i do want to say that uh, they had a great um meeting on sunday night the young people Man, there were so many of them, and it was just wonderful. Uh, people getting activated, Bertha. People getting activated. And you just sit back and say, hey, look, I don't want no part of it. I just want to see the fruits. Uh, people yeah. saying, hey, this radical teaching, this radical confidence in God, this teaching. And then when you say it over and over and over, it, it'll help you. When you jump around like a jelly bean, amen, uh, you, know, you can't really get the lesson. You know, sometimes you have to revisit the same thing just to rehash it in your spirit. So everybody tonight, we're going to start. If you didn't hear us on Sunday, you didn't hear the lesson on Sunday. OK, we've been talking about for a while now. This is like number six uh, series, and this is radical confidence in God. And now today we're talking about personal growth. Uh, our focus tonight, this being Bible class, personal growth. You have to invest in you. You know, if you really want to grow, you really want to do better, you literally have to put some investment. It's going to maybe cost you time, money, or both, or something else, sacrificing. We call, when you're in school, they call it opportunity costs, you know, because you, I got to do this. I, I can't, it's not going to make me a lot of money right now. It'll probably make me zero money that Bertha, but when you go to college or, you know, wherever you're going to go to school, you that's opportunity cost sooner or later something pays off and so as we learn starting having radical confidence in god is because we really see when we're not doing nothing we did really struggle in bertha with our confidence you know and we say oh i know that's not me then how come you don't have any new fruits how come you're not doing great things how come you're not tearing down walls how come not people not following you coming to god's house yeah, we, I can say anything. Anyone can say anything. But Jesus has a certain way he looks at stuff. He looks for fruits. We have to now start looking for results. If I have this faith in God, where's my fruits to prove it? Because fruit doesn't, doesn't have nothing to do with how you feel. It's what you do. And when you do something, when you plant a seed, you should look for some fruit. And so... So again, we're talking about radical confidence in God, and the focus again tonight is on personal growth. Amen. I see someone else just came in. All right. Hey, there you go, Minister Peggy. We'll we'll pop all you guys up there. All right. Let's get our first scripture tonight, everybody. Get your Bible. Get your Bible. Now, if you are watching and you do not know where these scriptures are, okay, don't give up. Don't close your Bible and give up. Don't do that. What you do is go to the front of your Bible and go to your table contents. Look down there. Now, this is there's two division, New and Old Testament. Look in the New Testament, Matthew, Mark. Mark is the second book. 
So when you see us pop a scripture on the screen, what you do is go to your table of contents if you don't know what it is. But I do want to say to you, don't give up. Don't give up. Why? Because we're pushing, encouraging. Everyone wants on a word in a positive sense for people to start growing. I can say I'm growing, but why is it struggling for me to get to God's house consistently? Why is it I'm struggling to pray consistently? Why, whenever I pray, Bertha, I'm asking for something for me. But I'm not doing nothing for nobody else. Now that sometimes that happened to the best of us. You know, but what we learn here in as we go to uh Bertha, can you go ahead and read chap Mark chapter four? Excuse me there, verse 26 through 29. Um screen is locked. I think her screen is locked, everybody. She's checking in again. All right, let me remove her out. No, just remove that one. Okay, she'll come back. She'll come back. Let's get the book of Mark. It's on your screen, Mark chapter 4, verse 26 through uh, 29. I'm going to look. I got my Bible to the right, so you have to work with me again because I'm not at home. Um, I think that's her trying to come on. There you are. You're back now. Okay. Amen. So, Bertha, we're looking at Mark chapter number four, if you don't mind reading that for us. Chapter four, verse 26 through verse number 29. Mark chapter four, everybody get your Bible. You can see it on the screen. Mark chapter four and verse 26 through 29. Again, we talked about it again on Sunday. We're coming right back because we're more interested in education, learning, school setting. Keep repeating it over so we get in our spirit. Amen. And then it becomes life, not just a conversation piece what I wish. No, it becomes life. I do this. This is how I live. I live by faith, which means you're always doing something that probably won't make sense to the natural mindset. But, you know, God is leading you because you're in his word, you're fasting, you're praying and so forth. All right, Bertha, you ready? Mark chapter number four, 26 through 29. And he said, so is the kingdom of God. As if a man should proceed into the ground and should sleep and rise night and day, and he and the seed should spring and grow and grow up, he knows not for the earth bringeth fruit herself. First, the blade, then the car, the ear after that he, that the foot. Amen. When the foot is brought forth, immediately he put it in the skull because the heart is come. Amen. I was wondering what happened to you. You disappeared. <laughs> we was looking at the ceiling, but you got cut, cut off a lot. Don't worry about it. We got some cut. Uh, but the bottom line is, what do we what do we learn from this whole concept of how the seed secretly grows? You want to write that down, everybody. The seed secretly grows. But what is he really referring to? He's given a parallel or a pictorial a picture, how the this seed works. You plant it, and once you plant it, see if I can get some more light on me here. Uh, once you plant it, okay, the seed knows what to do. It's written in the code of the seed that until you put the seed in the ground, as long as you have the seed, the code doesn't work. The moment you put the seed in the ground and you close it, the seed code begin to work. And then nature, as people say, nature takes its course. But it's really what God has spoken to the seed. And this is a partnership. Everyone's a partnership. I encourage you. I think I saw Bertha earlier. I encourage everyone to get your pen, get your piece of paper, amen, and make sure you get your Bible. Now, again, we don't, we're not, I'm not knocking, you know, using electronic stuff. But I'm saying it's good to get back to the Bible. Amen. This Bible, 
I've taken this Bible to Israel, Fiji, Europe, amen, throughout America, this, this Mexico, this Bible been with me all over the place, you know, because uh, it's important to take that word wherever we go. And when I'm on the plane, I'm reading sometimes. And so what we learn again, there's a code in the seed, but the code doesn't work, doesn't activate until the seed gets in its right place. When the seed gets in its right place and it partners the ground, the dirt begin to work with it and eventually the seed to come up. And that's what he's saying here. There's a system. And I want to encourage you to write that down. God has a system for everything. I mean, he wrote the systems. Uh, brilliant system. Hold on to the seed, leave it in the bag, put it in the can, doesn't do anything. Put it in dirt, it begins to respond. So it lets us know that the key, this is referring to, as we got to the end of it, when she was talking about, this is talking about the kingdom of God, how it works. In other words, the kingdom of God starts small, but it's spread now. And, and we'll come to that. We remember, uh, where is that at? Let me think. Where is that scripture at? Um, I think, I want to think it's that one, but I don't think. Let me Let me go. There's a scripture I'm thinking about, uh, everybody it, it hit my head. Let, let me let me see. Uh, that's not the one I want. Well, yes, go to Mark. I'm going to bring up a new one in. Go to Mark chapter number 16. Everybody go to Mark 16. Although it isn't on the screen, you can get your Bible, turn to Mark chapter 16. Okay. Now, again, this scripture here in, in, in Mark 4, as you're turning to Mark 16, the scripture in four just giving an example of how the kingdom of God works. It's an example. And you have to put it in its right place and it begins to grow. Okay. Once we receive the Holy Spirit, you know, the kingdom is in our life now. And we see here in verse 15, and he said, Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. Preach. What did Jesus tell us to do? Preach the gospel. That's what he told the people to do, preach the gospel. Now, obviously, we don't always hear someone preaching the gospel, do we? Preach a lot of other stuff. But where's the gospel? The death, burial, and the resurrection. The good news. You know, and that's what it says. It says, go. He, he tell it, and that's what we're talking about. When he become radical confidence in God, you're going to start doing things. You're going to start blessing people. You're going to start encouraging people. You're going to start praying for people. And you're going to start having testimonies because you did something. Many people, they're waiting for God to do something for them. And God has given us the Holy Spirit. And we receive that. We're born into this kingdom, this new kingdom. I can't physically see it. But it operates in us. And God, when he fills us, he said, now you get the Holy Spirit. Eventually he said, now you're going to have to go. And what are you doing, verse 15? Go and preach. Go into all the world and preach. Preach to everybody. Preach doesn't mean hooping. It doesn't mean you're in the pulpit. It means, what does preaching mean? It simply means to proclaim. You're proclaiming the good news. Some of them on Sunday morning in the pulpit, we say, oh, that's preaching. Then we go outside as evangelists. But you're still preaching. You're spreading the good news. Okay? And he said, go out into all the world. Verse 15. Again, you're just coming in. Uh, Mark 16, verse 15. He said, he that believeth and is baptized is going to be saved. But he that don't believe, he's not going to be, he's going to be damned. And the key is, look at verse number 17, everybody. Verse 17. He said, and these signs follow. And what we do, we try to get behind the signs. Does that make sense, Bert? We want to see the signs first to confirm that we're there versus our faith, brothers and sisters, versus our faith going in front, showing what we believe is our faith. And we show what we believe, everybody. Then he says in verse 16, verse 17, that the signs follow them that believe. Signs are going to follow you when you start creating action. And I want you to write that down, no matter how much you 
and I say what we say. It is going to come on what you do. And that is what's very, very important, everybody. Amen. Yes, you're exactly right, Michelle. Okay. You put the seed in the ground and they grow. God give you and I the Holy Spirit. We're supposed to grow. And that's why we're talking about radical confidence in God. Why? Because we want to see personal growth. We want to see the fruits of the kingdom come out of our life. This is why it says, here it is, let's see, in 17. These signs shall follow them that believe. Signs got to follow us. But signs doesn't follow us if we don't do anything. Now, please write that down. No matter how much we speak in tongues and, oh, and we just feel having a great time. But it's about the kingdom. It's about the kingdom. And, man, Mr. Peggy, you're right. God's kingdom is growing, although we don't understand all that is happening. Right. But we have to show our faith. You have to go and pray for that person. Well, one day God going to heal them. Why can't God do a miracle with you? I believe but you're not doing anything. You're still struggling with the basic stuff. Paul told us at one point, go on, lead the basic principles and go on, grow. And this is what God expects. Again, in verse 17, these signs will follow them that believe. In my name, they're going to cast out demons. They're going to speak with the tongue and they're going to take up serpent. If they drink anything, it won't hurt them. They shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. More of us got to start interacting with people concerning the gospel in the marketplace. We were looking for some kind of magic show. Maybe that's what people look. We look kind of magic show what's going to happen on Sunday. But today's Monday. Who say God can't use you on the phone? When you call a cousin in the hospital, God can use you. You don't have to scream and yell. Sometimes it happens, but you don't have to. God, if the kingdom is in you, it's all about the kingdom doing it. All we have to do is do our part. Show my faith by doing something. Praying for people. Showing the love of Jesus. Do something. Get busy doing something. Maybe your ministry isn't on a Sunday morning in the pulpit. If you only knew the burden of that you probably wouldn't want it. <laughs> um, Berkeley wouldn't want it. It's hard enough to get people to show up on a Sunday or any day to that effect. Amen. Then to say, when do I get my turn to get in the pulpit? You had the pulpit, is, the world is your pulpit. But some people, they only wait to be seen. That's not how it works. You have to take the kingdom of God into the marketplace. Take the kingdom of God, which is in you. Write that down. The kingdom of God is in you and it's birthing. That's what the scripture, uh, birth of the scripture, is one scripture in the New Testament, but there's another scripture. I'm trying to remember what Malachi, I'm trying to, was it Micah? I think it was Micah. Talking about the breaker. Talking about the breaker. Okay. Um, and the breaker would open the gate in the morning and let the sheep out of the fence. And then the other shepherd, the chief shepherd, will be out there and he'll call them. And that's when the scriptures say, the sheep know his voice. I think that's in, in Micah. And talk about the breaker. Okay. And, and when it talks about the breaker, everybody, it's, it's, you look at it, it's the same word where the kingdom of God is inside of you and it's breaking out of you. It's breaking out of you. Amen. You all right there, Bertha? I see the, you lose, we're losing your face. Yeah, we're losing you. <laughs> Where you somewhere, we see a shoulder. <laughs> but but again, when it talks about the breaker, I think that's, is that Micah, Ron? Or somebody, I think it's Micah. And the break, it breaks out. And what that simply means in the New Testament or understanding is that the kingdom of God get inside of you and it wants to come out. It wants to come out, kingdom of God. It's wherever God has it. God's power is in rulership, is ruling. The kingdom wants to come out of us. But if we just kind of 
don't do anything, it's not going to show up no how much I pray. Because he goes by our faith. And you can say faith slash action. And if I'm doing nothing, then the kingdom of God, good, thank you. Thank you. Um, fantastic. Thank you, somebody. So the kingdom of God, brothers and sisters, is very powerful. And that's why I want to make sure I say this to all of us, that the kingdom of God is so important that many people are missing it. And you can write it down, Pastor Sandra. Everybody, if you get your Bible, you want to turn it to Micah 2 and 13. Amen. Just go to the front of the Bible. If you don't know what Micah is, go to the front of your Bible. But in the Micah, uh, it talks about uh, Michael. It talks about in the Word of God. I'm trying to see if I can get it on the screen, but it's not. A little slow because I want to show it on the screen. But uh, you're looking it up, Bertha? I don't know if you're looking it up. Amen. And everybody, if you don't know what it is, just go to the front of your Bible. Again, I keep saying that. Go to the front, and you'll see where it's at. Amen. Nobody know. I, I got it. You know, but it's right after Joel. Okay. And if you go to Micah 2 and 13, let's go there. 2 and 13. This is talking about the breaker. Okay. Oh, did you say 2 and 13, Sandra? Oh, yeah, I guess so, because I'm in the wrong chapter. <laughs> He said, and the breaker is come up for them. They have broken up and have passed through the gate and are gone, I mean, and gone out by it, and their king shall pass before them and the Lord on the head of them. Okay. And this takes us back when you dealing with who was in school, that they talked about this particular scripture, uh, the breaker, because it comes in, sub, it, it, it parallels without going too deep and losing anyone. It parallels with where it said the king of God suffered violence and violence taken by force. But there's a different, there's a, a um, when you peel it off more, it comes out a little bit different when you peel it off. You know, I'm not going to go down that road. Did we lose you again there, Bertha? Mm -hmm. We keep losing you. There you are. Welcome back. Let me see if I can kick this one out of the studio. There you go. Can you hear me? Yes. Welcome back. You having some? So, what it talks about is the kingdom of God is inside of you, and that scripture parallels with this scripture in Michael talking about the breaker. And it really means. And I remember it was uh, Perry Stone said it one day. He kind of sharp, and I said, "Yeah, that's what it means, actually." And it means that the kingdom of God is inside of you and is breaking out. Amen. It's breaking out. It wants to spread. The kingdom of God inside of you want to give us a job. I'll say it that way. To go find someone, lay hands on the sick. Why? Because the sign shall follow them that's showing action. I'm going to say that again for you to take notes. Signs follow the person that's taking action. And it's inside of you. You don't need, you know, to get... um. A, a male coming to your house and God telling you, here's a special letter, you know, and signed by, by Jesus and said, okay, Bertha, I need you to go to the store and minister to that lady when she come up to you. It's not how it works. How it works, again, is that God give you the Holy Spirit and that Holy Spirit in you is trying to break out because the Holy Spirit wants to do something. It wants to do that. We can let it sit there dormant, don't put it, activate it, but it wants to do something. And so that's why we know about faith or slash action. That I have the kingdom of God inside of me and I put it to action. Hallelujah. I hope you're writing the notes, everybody. The kingdom, you get the Holy Ghost. The kingdom of God wants to birth, birth out of you, it wants you to do something. And it spreads. And it's like a little seed. Remember you read that earlier, Bertha? It's like a little seed. And you plant it in the ground, and it spreads. And the kingdom of God is the same way. That God gives you and me the Holy Spirit and said, now I want you to walk by faith. I want you to walk by acting, by action. Because inside of you is this thing called the kingdom. Hallelujah. 
This thing called the kingdom. You filled with the Holy Spirit. And you can go and lay hands and things happen. And many times we have to shake people, you know, all that. You don't have to do that. The power of God is in you. And when you lay hands and you show that faith, you've done your part. And that's all the scripture said. I just believe and I act on it. And when I do that, the kingdom birthed out of me. Out of nowhere, someone said, oh, I feel the power. I feel some healing. That's because the kingdom has been activated in you. And now you passed it on. And they see the power of God. And that's why the believer has to get up and do something. You can't sit around and waiting for brother somebody. Then they're not a come, they're not coming. You know, again, I want you to write that down. Michael, let me go back there one more time. Make sure you write down Michael two and three. That's about the breaker. Some great books you can read about it. Uh, but in the New Testament, we talk about the kingdom of God, suffer violence, violence, take it by force. But there's a deeper meaning in there, you know. And the kingdom of God is breaking out of us. We're activating it. And that's why Jesus, when he told him in Mark, was in Mark, what was that, 16? Mark 16? And, and he told us in Mark 16 about his power. Amen. And signs follow them that, you know, that believe in verse in Mark 16 and 17. You guys forgive me for turning my head on you just because I'm, I'm in the office. And my Bible's not in front of me because I'm on a, a laptop. Amen. But he said these signs, and it's plural with an S. These signs shall follow them that believe. Who is it following, Bertha? Say it again. I can't hear you. It's following us, me, you. Me, you, okay. It's following you, right? But yeah. how do we know it's there? When we take action and be accountable. Take action. See, we can believe God for all the. I'm gonna have faith for money. Yeah, that prosperity stuff again. I deal with financial education. I just, it just. Look at what Pastor Son said. The Jews themselves acknowledge this, recognize the breaker as the coming redeemer. Exactly right, Pastor Sandra. The same scripture when we see about the kingdom of God suffering violent violent taken by force. I never could understand that scripture. You know, but then you start understanding, oh, it's linked to the breaker. So the kingdom is in me breaking out. It wants to get out. It want me to go pray for people. The kingdom want me to go lay hands on people. Now, I know a number of people, they have a different perspective on that. I'm just saying in school, that's what they teach you. And it blew my mind. Like, wow, that makes way more sense than just reading that scripture because I couldn't, no matter how people interpret it, it still didn't make sense. It's just suffering violence. And then all of a sudden, now it's violent, then it's violent taken by four. So we got the devil in there. Us, I don't know how that works. <laughs> Amen. I don't know how that works, but I ain't knocking anyone. I'm just saying it makes more sense when I was in school. It's, oh, the breaker. It's breaking. So the kingdom of God is in you. The moment you lay hands, Bertha, the moment you take action. And what are we talking about tonight, everybody? Radical confidence in God. Personal growth. Now, today, we usually I'm not here on Tuesday, Bertha, but we knew that rug thing needed to be done, and no one could come, so I had to come. I had to switch my days, and I came because we needed to get something done. You see what I'm saying? And sometimes you, I, I got had to do some. Sometimes you got to sacrifice something to get something else. Hallelujah. It's just not going to happen. Because I keep, it's one thing I got to speak it, but I also, Jesus tell me to speak to the mountain. But I, I got to, sometimes the kingdom of God tell you to confront stuff. Don't have to be birth of someone picking on you, bothering you. But sometimes you got to confront yourself. You know better than this. You're much smarter than that. You're not that lazy guy. Let's go to Matthew on your screen. Matthew 13. Matthew 13. Amen. Let me know you're on there. Uh, I, I see we got a, you know, I see a number. Let, let, just let me know that 
that know that you're on there now. Let's go. We'll go to Matthew chapter 13 and verse number 31 through 33. What I want to say to all of us is things are happening in Pasadena because we're doing something. Now we're getting ready to um, organize certain things to get ready for people that get baptized. And our, our system, got to have a system, follow up, talk to them, pray with them, yada, yada, yada. But it's you have to exercise, even in the practical things, once I start typing it in, I was working on something. I'm showing what I believe. Even in doing my, you, I'm doing something for ministry. I'm showing that I believe in God. But I'm also, the key to want me to connect with people. To connect. And so here in Matthew 13, verse number 31 through 33, said another parable put forth of them saying, the kingdom of heaven is like to a grain of mustard seed, which a man took and sowed in the field which indeed is the least of the seed, but when it is grown, it is the greatest among the herbs and become a tree so that the birds of the air come and lodge and the branch thereof. Okay, so here what we understand is it's saying it again in this parable. The kingdom of God is like a small mustard seed. It's, it looks, it's so small. It's about the size of a grain of rice. So I forgot what color it was. It brown or black. I can't remember, but it's some, one of those colors. And it's a small, but that seed can grow almost in any soil. And it grow, it can grow, they would throw, it can grow among rocks. Because there's something powerful in that seed. That little small thing is packed. But it grows and grows and grows, and it becomes the tallest tree. Because what's in there, in it, excuse me, is what's in it. And what's in it is very powerful. And Jesus here teaches that the kingdom of God is the same way. There's something powerful in God's people when they activate what they believe, meaning when they do something. And when they start doing something, he said, all of a sudden, it becomes greater. People say, oh, that church is growing. Why your church ain't growing over there talking to someone else? And say, because they ain't doing nothing. All you have to do is do something. And God is faithful to bless people to come to your thing. But we have to do something. We can't sit here and speak in tongues all day long and don't do anything. You got you to invite people. You really get, people got to see the kingdom of God in your life when you're in the marketplace. Any thoughts, Bertha? You want to share some thoughts on that? Just trying to dissect, though. You just want to say, praise the Lord. Okay. Amen. Thanks. Praise the Lord. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But see, but that's the thing about the kingdom. It's so powerful. And that's what we got to really focus on. It's not church, but the kingdom of God. And this is what radical, radical confidence, radical confidence. But I've got to focus on personal growth. I've got to start growing more. Some people are waiting for other stuff, but hey, look, you got to grow, but you got to do something. Well, y'all pray for me. No, we're past praying. Cut it out. Past praying. I'm not going to not pray, but you, it, there's no magic to this. If you don't plant the seed, nothing coming out. If you don't do something, brothers and sisters, nothing comes out of it. You have to do something. Put what you believe to faith. Do something what you believe. If you believe God can make a way, you say, God, help enlarge my faith. Okay. He's going to put you in front of a big mountain. <laughs> then he's going to say, Bertha, what are you going to do? Y'all pray for me. Wait, whoa, whoa, whoa. That's not. You prayed for God to do something great. So he put a big obstacle to build your faith. God, why did you let that happen? It's for the kingdom, he said. It's for the kingdom. It's for the glory of the kingdom. That's a rough lesson, God. Of course it is. Flesh resists this. Flesh want to be comfortable. Don't push me too hard. <laughs> Faith don't want that. We said, Bertha, you got to bring 15 people. 
Why are you afraid to join? Everybody, I'm picking on Bertha right now. <laughs> he said the same thing to me and every one of us, brothers and sisters. How many of y'all that are watching, how many of you guys that are watching, put it in the comment section. Let me know. I want to know uh, how many of you guys are ready to show what you really believe. And you are willing to be, when God talked to you, you're willing to move to make that happen. Go ahead and make a comment and put it on, say, I'm in, or I'm, include me, or oh, I'm ready. That'll be better. I'm ready for it. Oh, I better yet, I submit to that. If that's you, I want you to type that in the comments so I can see what's what. Amen. Good to see you there, Dana. God bless you. God bless you. All right, Malik. Good to see you, Malik Gordon and Minister Peggy. Good, good, good. Amen. Michelle, we're coming back to you again. Good to see all of you guys. Amen. Dr. Sandra, we see you there, Ron. Amen. Minister Ron, we see you there. Amen. And Beverly Costa, we see you. So, brothers and sisters, what I'm saying is that I stay. I came here because we had to get this done. Otherwise, they're going to wait till Saturday. I don't want to do that. We're trying to get on Friday. We're trying to get them to come and put the, the glass around. But you got to be ready when it happens. You got to listen. Brothers and sisters, write this down. You've got to be ready to adjust your life. Wow. So the kingdom can birth out of you, burst out of you. I want you to make a note of that. You've got to be ready. You got to be ready for what you never thought would happen. Hallelujah. Because it's coming to the people that walk in faith. There are many people birth them. Maybe you can comment. There are many people. All right. Look what Pastor Sandra said. She said, I'm ready to move. There you go. I'm ready to get on the move. Is there anyone else you're ready? Like Pastor Sandra, let me let me know it, that you're ready to move. Ready to get up there and say, Lord, I'm ready to do something for you. Are you ready, Bertha? You, you ready to make a, I can't hear your declaration. Oh, there you go. I'm looking for that declaration. I'm ready, God. You know, and you got to be ready. I mean, my goodness, you got to be ready because you don't know when God, brothers and sisters, is going to tell you to do something. And it may not make sense, but this is what the kingdom of God will do. But you got to do something. You can't just go to the prayer closet for five hours. But don't do nothing. Jesus, when they prayed, then he got up there and he did something. He went to the cross. He cast out demons. He laid hands, so forth and so on. The apostles, they all start ministry. Wow, look at what happened, God. He said, don't get too excited. I'm paraphrasing, obviously. Don't get too excited. Amen. All right, look, look at what Malik said. It's him. Of course, it's going to be big. The kingdom of God we're talking about. We're talking about the kingdom of God. Yes. Yes, we are. And so, brothers and sisters, this is the new move. I don't want to say a new move. This is the move where time is so short. We just can't guarantee life tomorrow. Every day we lay down tonight, it's dark. So when we lay down, we got to pray that we get up. Ooh, Jesus. We got to pray that we get up. Amen. Amen. I'll be right back.
so we're talking, brothers and sisters, about the kingdom of God. Amen. And, and about personal growth. And the title for you just joining us, it's Radical Confidence in God. Personal growth. I have to take responsibility. You know, I'm looking at stuff. It's okay, Rick, we need to change some things. It's not working. You know, so I have to take responsibility and start making things change. You know, get everybody on the same page. No, no separate pages. No separate thoughts. No, no, I've got this going on. You got that going on. But that's the church. That's not how it works. I mean, everyone had to be on point with Moses. And there was those that couldn't handle Moses' authority. But God never called them to the mountain. <laughs> he never called them to the mountain. And so, so what I'm saying to you and me, brothers and sisters, is this. Something great is going to happen when you say yes. When you tell God, I'm going to start obeying you now. And if you send someone my way, I'm going to pray with them. Just like we see here in Matthew. I'm going to pray with them. And I'm going to lay hands on them. I'm not going to pray in secret. I'm going to pray in front of them, that everybody see the power. And so when we come a little bit further, we go to Galatians chapter number five, brothers and sisters. Now, where's Galatians? If you go into Galatians, it's in the New Testament. And if you don't know where it is, go to the table of contents. You got two divisions. You got Old Testament, you have New Testament. Okay? It's in the New Testament. Okay? And you look at the book Galatians. Galatians Ephesians, Philippians, Colossians, those are all in the same area. Start looking at the Corinthians, They're all in the same area, first and second Corinthians. Then you're going to get into these epistles, okay? And you get to Galatians chapter number five, as you see on the screen in verse number 22 and 23. And he says, But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance, and there is no limit on. I'm paraphrasing. There's no limitation. But what are we really trying to say to you, brothers and sisters? There is no limit on how much love you can show and how much joy you're going to have. There's no limit to how much peace you can have, how much long suffering. There's no limit to it. gentleness, goodness, and faith. There's no limit to it. God wants us to do this so he can use us in a powerful way. He wants us to do this so he can use us. He, he can heal someone. And sometimes when you pray, it doesn't necessarily happen right away. Right, Bertha? Doesn't happen. I don't know. I think we lost again. Doesn't happen. All right, you're back. <laughs> Amen. Thank God. And so, but we see there's no limit to this. You do faith on one thing, brothers and sisters, then you connect again doing faith some more. But look at what it says. The fruit of the Spirit. So there are, I, it, I have the Holy Spirit. There should be some fruits from the Holy Spirit in my life. Hallelujah. There should be some fruit. You want to see fruit in your walk with God. Amen. You want to. That's exactly right. Michelle, hallelujah. You want to see fruit. You don't want to have a relationship with God and don't see anything. Because you know why? Look at what Pastor Sandra said. The fruit of the Spirit benefit others. When you have a victory, other people see it and get encouraged too. Bertha, when you are showing faith, you encourage those that didn't even believe in God. But they saw you. They said, well, not only God, I know that was you. No, that was God working through me. It's called the Holy Spirit. It's called the kingdom of God. I didn't do this before I knew Jesus. I only learned this after I learned Jesus. When he came into my life and I repented, he changed my life. Man, it's a different ball game. One thing about the Lord, when you walk with him and you sin, you feel really bad. Maybe I'm the only one, but you feel really bad for doing something, thinking something, saying something, because you're no longer your own. We have a greater God inside of us. And God, I'm saying to you, God want to do great things with you. 
but you've got to get activated. You don't need to go to 50 hours of prayer. Please go to 50 hours. I'm not saying don't go, Bertha. Sandra, Michelle, I'm not saying don't go. Don't interpret that. I, I said that. I'm saying to you, but when the apostle was on there in Acts chapter 3, they was on their way to prayer. And God interrupted that and used them. And all they did was they saw something. That's what the scriptures say. The natural eyes, they saw something. We got this power, man, such as I have. Get up and walk. And reached out. The man grabbed the hand. That was their faith in action. Because their faith in action. That's all I'm saying. It's something you do. Faith isn't something you feel. It's not something in our head. It's action. You know, I can't say air is meatloaf. <laughs> it's not. So I can't, I can't say faith. I got faith and don't do nothing. That's not faith. Not at all. It's not faith. Faith is action. You want to see a youth minister grow? You've got to give up some time. You want to see a prayer team go, grow? You got to call people to pray with you. You want to see signs and wonders? Then you got to go around people that's sick. People hurt. And you don't, well, I'm just waiting till God leave me. Sometimes you're two eyes like Peter them. I don't see anything in the book of Acts, chapter three, where it was a pardon my freak, something spooky going on or something, something real spiritual. No, they're just going to prayer. It's a normal day. Probably seen this guy before a hundred times. This day, Bertha, they went to prayer. Something about them seeing it after the Messiah has died and gone. And they done just received the Holy Spirit in Acts chapter number two. And then we see in, in chapter number three, what did they do? They activated what they believe. They activated their faith. They, they put it in go mode. Write that down. Put, write that for your birth, everybody. Put your faith in go mode. G-O, go mode. Put your faith in go mode. Give your faith a job. Let me see if I can put that in here. Yeah, let me see. I want to type it too. Amen. All right, let's see, did I spell that right? All right, here. Put your faith in go mode. Put it in, shift it. A car won't go forward till you shift it and put it in drive. Then it goes. So you have to put, we have to put our faith in go mode. Are you ready for that, Bertha? How many of you are watching? Are you ready for this? Let me know. Hit me up. I see some of you on Facebook and some of you I can't see. I see. Uh, let's see. We got quite a few more on YouTube. Amen. Put your faith in go mode. Do something with your faith. So I say, listen, I'm in go mode right now. That's what you say, Bert. I'm in go mode. Did you write it down? Highlight it, underline it, everybody. Put your faith in go mode. That's what faith is. It's something you do. You don't feel it. You know, Mr. Peck say, thank God for the fruit of gentleness and self-control. It was working for me last week. It's in go mode. Do something with what you believe. Get your faith off the shelf. Will y'all pray for me? Why don't you pray for you too? You have to take responsibility. Otherwise, it ain't going to happen. And so you have to put it in go mode, brothers and sisters. Do something with what you say you believe. You say you believe, then do something. And what does Peter say here in First Peter? Let's get First Peter. If you don't know where it is, go to the table of contents. Don't quit. Don't, don't close your Bible because you don't know where it's at. Don't get mad. I quit. No, don't do that. Just go to the front of the Bible. First Peter chapter 2, verse 2. It says, Newborn babe desire the sincere milk of the word 
that you may grow by there, thereby, excuse me. Desire the sin sealed milk that you may grow. And the whole issue is growing. You need to see fruits so your confidence will increase. Results is very encouraging. I see results. I saw what I saw today, Bertha, when they worked on the carpet and the craftsmanship, the details, the way they were laying down and cutting it a certain way. And you you can't, I mean, they was flapping things over so clean. I said, now that is an art. They were in go mode. They knew their skill set. And if you know God will use you, then pray. Call someone on the phone. I feel like you can sit there and watch TV and God say, hey, call blank. Well, yeah, call him. Call her, yes. He may do that, and you call him. Man, I'm so glad you called. I've been needing some prayer. Really? You're in go mode. You're in the store. You're minding your business. You And you don't even hear God talk to you. What you hear is someone say on the phone, hey, you know, Barbara, can you do me a favor? Just keep me in prayer. I've been having some stomach problems. Bam, go mode, Bertha. Excuse me, ma'am. I don't mean to be nosy. I heard you talking on the phone. You know, I'm a believer, but I want to pray for your stomach. I heard you. Now, that wasn't super spiritual because you heard her. God didn't tell you. She, you, you heard the person say, I got a stomach problem. You go into go mode. That's going to be our thing now. Go mode. Are you ready for go mode, Bertha? Are y'all ready watching? Are y'all ready for go mode? I mean, really. Talk to me. Are y'all, somebody type in, go, I'm ready for go mode. Let me, let me hear you. Don't just sit around. Because this is where things are going to be, asked, be phenomenal what God's about to do. I just, all this training, I'm getting us ready because it's coming. I keep telling you guys it's coming. And we've got to be in that go mode. Let me know, put that down. Like I said, if you, if you see it, you know, oh, okay. There's Look at what Beverly say. She said, I'm ready for go mode. You could be at the store. The next thing you know, something happened. Something happened. Where'd that come from? Because you chose to do something. It wasn't no earth shaking move. It wasn't all oh, bad. Hey, Bertha, you know, something, you know, hey, Michelle, hey, Aaron. It was nothing like that. You didn't hear nothing from God. Dr. Johnson, she said, Dr. Sandra Johnson said, I'm ready for go mode. That's right. I want to hear more people. Who's ready for go mode? That means it can happen anytime. We live in go mode. Write that down. Stay in go mode. It won't be all the time. Sometimes nothing will happen. And you go in, go to the store, get your stuff, and go home. But then there's going to be times, everybody. There's going to be times all of a sudden. All right. He said, let's go. I guess that means you're in go mode, Malik. See, a lot of people are losing and don't realize they're starting to lose. They're barely hanging on. And God's telling you, you need to uh, rev in the engine up. And the last thing we go to is First Peter. I mean, not First Peter, Psalms. Go to Psalms. Now, you know, watching that's in the Old Testament. Book of Psalms, chapter one. That's actually the book in the middle of the Bible. Psalms chapter one. Again, don't give up. Don't throw it in the towel. Don't say, I don't do it because I can't find this book. Go to your table of contents. Look for the book of Psalms. It's in the middle when you get to the Old Testament. All right, Dana says she's in the ready for, I'm going to say go mode. <laughs> she's ready. Be active. God, I'm ready. You're going to activate me. I'm ready, God. And God says, sometime I won't say anything. You now, signs will follow you, which means your day-to-day -day life, signs going to follow you, Bertha. When you least expect it. And you didn't get a, a revelation. There was no great anointing, no cloud in the in the store. You in the marketplace. It was just that all of a sudden you felt an unction. I think I need to pray for this person. And there it is. There it is. Praise God. And you lay hands. 
and change that person for life. I had a lady come here and from, from next door, the, 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 the doctor's office, and she dropped something off for the office. And we were talking, and she came in, and she said, wow, you're doing a lot around here. I said, yeah, Elizabeth, we are. I said, you want to see? She said, can I? I said, sure. So I took her around, sure, what's going on? And she said, really, all this is going on? I said, we just see stuff. We didn't know what was happening. Took her inside the sanctuary. She said, wow. Wow, she said. All this is, I said, yeah, this, we gutted the whole thing out, literally <laughs> gutted it out. We did everything by God's mercy and grace. But see, because I believe, Bertha, I believe a long time ago. Did I feel like quitting? Yes. I'm not going to lie. Did I feel like throwing in the towel? I'd be ashamed. It was so many times. Did I doubt God? I'm ashamed I did. But I didn't stop. Sometime I just shut my mouth because I didn't want to mess it up. <laughs> I just didn't want to mess it up, so I shut my mouth, talking to my own self. But look at what it says in here in Psalms, chapter number one, verse one through number three. Blessed is the man that walketh, not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of the sinners, but his seat is in the seat of, and, and nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful, but his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law that he meditate day and night. And he's going to be like a tree planted by rivers of living water, and that bringeth forth his fruit, his fruit. Wait a minute. Did he make this personal, Bertha? Huh? I can't hear you. You, you muted. He made it personal? personal? Yes, he did. He said, your fruit. Whoa, wait. Yeah, he said, your fruit. You will bring forth your fruit. But his delight is in the law of the law, and in his law doth he meditate day and night. He shall be planted like a tree. Solid. You have, you're on solid ground, and you're planted. You have stability. He shall be planted like a tree, by the rivers of water. You are a tree. Now, what does that tell us? You are a tree that's planted by the waters. So the water is, you got, your source is around you. Mm. You're a tree. Look at those trees that are planted by water. They're always enriched. They're very fruitful. They're always green. And he said, that's what your life going to be like. You're going to be planted. Hallelujah. Like a tree planted by the rivers. You're going to have source to grow. God's going to feed you to grow. He said, this is what that person's like. And that you're going to bring forth his fruit. His fruit. He's going to bring forth his fruit in his season. Whithersoever you go, the anointing and the spirit of fruitfulness. Go wherever you go. Now, y'all better give God a praise on that one. The spirit of fruitfulness, wherever you go, will go with you, especially when you do what? You activating your faith. Hallelujah. I think I see that. Oh, they, I got a couple more. Let me get them in there, Bertha. Amen. Let's see. Amen. This is what Aaron said. Aaron said, I'm ready for go mode as well. There you go. Mr. Pegg said, the time is growing short. We, the church, must be ready for what's coming. Yes. And the Pastor Sandra said, Dr. Johnson said, the blessed person is proactive. People say, oh, I can't do it. I got so much to do. Look, slow down. Focus on what's right right now. I don't know. I don't know if I can do this. It's going to work. You're exactly right. It's not going to work for you. I'm speaking some, y'all. I've been telling I'm speaking some. I've been talking like I got it. Hello, bro. I've been talking like I have it. I said, okay, Lord, I want to do this here because this is personal. This is personal with me, God. For what happened to me, I, I need this to clear my head down. It's personal. But he says you're going to bring forth your fruit in your season. But here's the problem, the opposite, though, number four. He said the ungodly are not so, but they're like the chaff with the wind just... Drive them away. 
no substance. Therefore, the ungodly shall not stand in the judgment, nor a sinners in the congregation of the righteous. For the Lord know the way of the righteous, but the way of the ungodly shall perish. God knows if we're doing right or wrong. We know, but God knows. I, I would say, can I get an amen, but I'll leave it alone. This is why we got to be in go mode. I like that. I think I'm going to preach on that on Sunday. Get in go mode. Amen. Take your, metaphorically speaking, take your life out of, out of park. You've got to put it in drive. You got to get it out of park. Some people got their life in, in reverse. It doesn't work that way. God is calling his church to be in more go mode. You've got to move forward. And this is personal. Well, we're not talking about corporate right now. We're saying you personally. God can use you tomorrow if you let him. He can use you in the marketplace if we let him. I pray that everyone... This has definitely been a blessing to your life today. I pray. Is that a short message for you? Listen, I know you've heard a wonderful word today and God really ministered to you. But the ultimate thing is that God tells us that we need to be born again. And what does that really mean? It means to be born from above. And how do you do that? The first thing you do is repent. You can see that on the screen. Uh, the team has shared it with you on the screen. You can repent. That means just change the way you think. And, you know, you just, it's a process, uh, but it's a start to say, Lord, I'm sorry for what I've done. So repentance. And the Bible also tells us two other things. We have to be baptized. Now, there's many things people talk about baptism, but what you see in the Bible is the Bible teaches us to be baptized. It means to be full immersion in the water. So it's your watery grave, and you get baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Why the name of the Lord Jesus Christ? Because that's the only name God has given us whereby we must be saved. And the last thing is for you to be filled with the precious gift of the Holy Spirit, which is God's Spirit giving you, putting His Spirit inside of you and helping you. Many times we say we can't walk this walk, but it's the Holy Spirit that helps us. And so I, mean, I, I encourage you to consider those three things when it comes to salvation. It's repentance, baptism, full immersion in the water in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And you can see scriptures at the bottom and also being filled with the gift of the Holy Ghost. As the Spirit, and when you receive the Holy Spirit, you'll notice that you speak in tongues. It's not your native language. It's a different tongue that God gives you, and He gives you that language to show you. First of all, He's inside of you, and thereafter, His Spirit will begin to lead you. So I pray that that help you. Again, I want to say it one more time: it's repentance, baptism in the name of the Lord Jesus, and being filled with the gift of the Holy Ghost. And after that, you begin to share your testimony. You'll start living this life, but you share your testimony what God has done for you. Listen, this is Bishop Ricky Johnson from Shield of Faith Christian Center in Pasadena. Website is sofpasadena.org. Again, sofpasadena.org. Go there, hit the growth button, and, you know, we've got some material for you to help you grow. Again, I appreciate Thank you for joining us today for wonderful service, and God bless you in Jesus' name. Well, amen, everybody. We thank you for being tonight. A good number. Uh, many of you stayed. I pray that this has been a blessing to you. Amen. I think, Mr. Sean, I think I see you there on uh, Facebook. All right, Sister Bertha, you have any closing remarks you want to share with anyone? Anyone thought what you learned tonight? What did you learn tonight? Anyone, please type in there. Tell me what you learned just before we close. Tell me what you learned tonight. Uh, Sister Bertha, you got any, tell me what you learned. What did you learn tonight? I learned to put my, get my life out of stock and get it in go mode. Okay. Ready for the go mode. And I'm I'm just grateful that God is using me as I pray for my sister before she went to surgery. Okay. And I'm noticing that God has given her a remarkable recovery. And as I take her food daily, mm. Mm. I I see her growth spiritually. So Amen. I'm grateful. Amen. That love is powerful. Yes. It's very powerful. See, you don't know what it's like to you in the hospital and you're sick 
And man, you need your family. You need your family. You need them friends to come up there and pray with you. So thank you for loving your sister. Uh, so everybody, I pray that this has been a blessing to you. Um, our, our, our desire is to make sure whatever we can do is to get us focused on personal growth. That's this week. And um, we've been studying other things. Um, all of this is under the umbrella, amen, of radical confidence in God. And that simply means I'm, I got to start believing God. I've got to start graduating up in my faith. And that only happens when God gives us these tests. I'm using this concept. You know, he gave me a chance to go pray with this person. But if I don't go pray with them, then I fail that test. I'm too busy. I failed that test. I don't have enough time. I failed that test. Or you know what, God? Sometimes, brothers and sisters, it only takes... Go over there. Let me just pray with you. You got to scream or yell. You just put your hand on them. And God, I just want to pray for sister so-and-so. I want to pray for this lady. You know, pray for sister, Miss So-and-so. She's I see her in the in the, here. And she does deep prayer. So I got, we pray for your power of miracles right now in Jesus' name. It's that simple. Because it's not in your screaming and yelling. It's all of God, but you have to move. Get in go mode. That's our thing. Get in go mode. Get in go mode. Acts chapter number three. Peter and it was in go mode as soon as they saw the guy. Listen, I appreciate you guys uh, coming tonight, being with us. And, and again, as you see, I am still in, I'm in Pasadena tonight. I'm thanking God that the carpet is done. So prayerfully, we're looking for the people to show up. We'll, I think we're going to call them tomorrow. Show up, and on Friday, we get that splash guard, and it is done. We're going to get a couple more steps put. I noticed that we're going to need these few steps to cover but I'm grateful to the Lord for uh, what he's doing. But I'm in go mode. I've been just like telling myself, hey, you got to do. Hey, Ivan, I see you there. Hey, Nathan, my friend Nathan, how you doing? Nathan Christian. I was with them last night, and then Ivan Coven is, amen. If you didn't get a chance to see all of this, brothers and sisters, Amen. I want you go back and rewind when we finish, but I'm telling you this much. You need to get in go mode with your faith. You need to go mode. Go mode. Activate what you say you believe. And watch signs and wonders follow. Signs and wonders do not follow people doing nothing. Father, we thank you tonight. We bless you for the word. We honor you, God. Help us that be alert when a, a, something comes in our in our, in our space, God. Help us to be alert. It could be on the phone. It could be in a conversation on the phone. It could be at the office. It could be at the store. Wherever. It could be at DMV. It could be anywhere, God. And we're always in go mode. You're going to speak to us. And we're going to see things this week where you're going to tell us to pray for that person or speak to that person or give that person a card or whatever you tell us, God. We thank you for this opportunity to be used by you. We give you all the glory and the honor in Jesus' name. Amen. What a wonderful class for me, brothers and sisters. I want to thank you again. Amen. This is Sister Bertha. She's with me tonight. Amen. Maybe next week the other group will show up with me. <laughs> I keep going. Though. I'm in go mode. I'm telling you. Amen. But this is Bishop Ricky Johnson. And hey, I'm at the Shield of Faith uh, Pasadena campus. Amen. That's where I'm at. I'm at the Shield of Faith at the Pasadena campus. And we're grateful for what God's doing, the ministry he's given us. God bless you in Jesus' name.